Today I'm looking at my ICOM IC746 Pro and I've been having trouble with the external speaker jack with this thing uh, for a little while and you can see here if I grab the speaker wire the audio cuts in um, but if I let go it cuts out and uh, what I suspect is going on is a bad solder joint on the circuit board uh, where the connector is soldered to the board. So I'm going to pull the, uh, the radio out here and have a look at it. Okay, I've got the radio here on the bench and just kind of a closer look at what's going on. You can see everything's plugged in and hooked up. Here's the external speaker and if I wiggle it you should be able to hear the speaker come to life. But uh, you can see here it's, it's pretty loose. So, um, I'm going to take this thing apart and see what's going on. Okay, I'm going to start by removing all the screws here. Uh, first there's some on the side, and then there's a bunch along the bottom here. So, I'm going to remove all these screws and then uh, remove the case. Okay, so I've got the bottom cover off, and you can see uh, the external speaker jack is here. Um, unfortunately, this board is component side up meaning the solder side is down uh, which means this board is going to have to come out and there are a fair number of things to disconnect here in order to kind of free this board up uh, there's a few uh, wiring harnesses and a bunch of ZIF cables uh, which you need to be careful with that you don't uh, bend the tabs or break these cables or anything like that and then uh, there's a fair number of screws here, although the screws seem pretty well identified and labeled. And then there is one screw on the back of uh, these jacks here that'll probably have to come out. And then I think this will lift off if there's no other hidden surprises on the other side of the board. Okay, so I've got all the ZIF cables pulled off. There's one, two, three, four, and then a fifth one back here. And then I've gotten some of these other wiring harnesses out. There's a two-pin wire there, a two-pin wire that was sort of here, an RF wire. Uh, there's this one that I missed with a ferrite on it, so that's out now. And then there's a two-pin one hiding under this ZIF cable. And I think that's all the cables. I think I've got them all there. Um, so now we'll start pulling the screws, and one thing that I noticed here, I didn't see it originally, was uh, this device has a screw uh, through the body that looks like it's mounted to the heatsink below the board. This is going to have to come out as well, even though it's not directly holding the board down. You can see it's holding the component, and the component is soldered to the board there. So um, we'll pull all this out and see what happens. Okay, I've got all the screws out of here, and uh, just one thing to note is that on screw number seven was this little spring clip that was sort of mounted uh, to the hole and then underneath this uh, metal cage, uh, presumably to make contact with it and ground it. Um, so that came out, and then all of the screws were the same except for the one holding down this part. It's got uh, a little bit of a shoulder or built-in washer there, actually. And uh, so that one's a little different, so I set that aside. And now I think the board is pretty much free. Doesn't feel like anything else is holding it in. So there it is. Okay, so taking a closer look at the, the board here where the external speaker jack is mounted, you can see the three leads coming through the board. And the first two here are uh, soldered to you know pads properly. And this last one uh, there doesn't seem to be a pad on the board. Uh, it's hard to tell if there ever was a pad on here, um, but at any rate, what's going on now is that there's just a blob of solder on the pin, and then a short little piece of wire, uh, or a um, piece of a, a component lead or something, soldered between the, uh, the speaker jack terminal and a via on the circuit board. Um, I'm not sure if this was done at the factory like this or if somebody, a uh, previous owner, uh, tried to make a repair here. Uh, but at any rate, what's happened is the uh, the little piece of wire isn't really properly soldered to the speaker jack. Um, the solder didn't really wet to the, um, to the piece of wire all that well, and what little bit 
that did wet to it is now cracked and the uh, the connection is intermittent so I should be able to just heat this up maybe add a little bit of solder to it get it to get it to wet and flow nicely and uh, hopefully this problem will be solved okay I'm not sure how visible uh, any change here will be but I have reflowed this the little blob of solder kind of moved around a little bit and I put a little uh, little flux on there to kind of get it to uh, wet to that wire better and it seems like it's it's uh, pretty much uh, wetted now and then while I was at it I just touched up these two connections too just in case there was any issue there although they they looked okay under magnification but uh, I decided to touch them up anyway uh, so now I guess I'll just reassemble and uh, see if everything works okay I've got the board uh, mounted back in the radio here in the chassis and I'm going to uh, put the uh, the mounting screws back in and again most of these mounting screws are the same except for the one that holds down this part and uh, of course the one that uh, goes into the plastic back here okay one one thing to note here is just this little uh, uh, spring clip that needs to go under there I'm going to take the screw out of it so this just kind of goes in under here like this and uh, you want to make sure, and I haven't studied the board here, but once this is screwed down, you can see there's actually an extra blob of silk screen that's kind of covering these traces in addition to the solder mask. And I think that's to prevent the clip from shorting to those traces. So when you're putting this in, you want to kind of be careful that you don't scratch this or, or somehow cause some kind of a short there. It would be kind of hard to do, but it's possible so you want to be a little bit delicate and uh, there is going to need to be a little force on this because this just kind of slides under here and then uh, put the screw in and torque it down and, and that keeps the force on this thing um, I think this thing would actually come out there's just some connectors there but I'm not going to fool with it I'm just going to put the screw back in the same way that I took it out okay so here's just a kind of look at this thing from the side here's the the can and then the uh, the spring clip is screwed down and kind of up under here and and making good contact with the can and then you can see you know part of it kind of comes over this silk screened area where the traces are running underneath but uh, it should be okay this is actually how it was more or less uh, before I took it apart so again as long as you don't really scratch through this or torque this down too bad I think everything's going to be okay in this area uh, and that's probably why this this extra piece of silk screen exists in the first place Okay, so I've got all the screws in, including the one on this part and the one back here. here. Okay, so I've got all the wires and ZIF cables reconnected. Uh, there was a wire here, these three ZIF cables. There's a wire uh, hiding underneath this ZIF cable that I plugged in before I plugged the cable in, obviously. A uh, cable here, wire, uh, the one with the ferrite on it. A wire here, an RF wire here and one more ZIF cable back here and I think that's everything so now I will uh, put the bottom cover on, tighten the screws down and then uh, power everything up and see if uh, if this worked okay I've got everything back together and hooked up on the bench here and you can hear, should be able to hear some sound coming out of the external speaker and uh, if I go back here and wiggle the wire in the connector everything is good. It's still a little bit loose but uh, again after having you know taken it apart and looked at it I know why this is kind of loose now just the way the board is but uh, but it's you know it's functioning so that's uh, that's all we're after. Out of here. I'm still not over this freaking okay so you can got. hear uh, there's definitely sound the coming out of the speaker up there it's connected it's not breaking up or anything like that. Um, good yeah, loud so I guess uh, I'm going to call this repair a success. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful.